Here are eight unique and easy ways to help celebrate Asian American Heritage Month because it is May. Yeah, whether you call it A-A-N-H-P-I, A-A-P-I, A-P-I, that's up to you. Number one, go eat some Asian cultures food that you have yet to try. A lot of people, and they eat the basics from a lot of cultures, but they don't go that deep. Oh, yeah, and also, you know, obviously a lot of people and most people have had some type of Chinese food but what type of Chinese food? Well, why don't you go pick uh, uh, Sichuan food if you haven't had it, or Hunan food, or maybe non-Chinese. I always like to recommend people try Lao food. Lao food's very delicious. Lao food is incredible. I've got Burmese, because if we look at these stats of restaurant availability in America, more than likely, like you said, people have had the big three, Japanese, Korean, Chinese, Vietnamese, Thai for sure. Even but, Indian food, they've yeah, got yeah. a lot of Indian food. But with the Indian food, would you agree that they're just only eating butter chicken and garlic naan? For the most part. Yeah, how about just try to get some layers deep? Yeah, and also it just takes you into a different place, man. When you go to a little hole in the wall, mom and pop shop, uh, it just like, it'll feel more like their home or I don't want to say maybe their village, it, but either way, it's just a different experience than just ordering from the main spot that you usually do. You're saying going to the Enclave, it feels like you're more going to a mini version of that country. Venture out. How about this? At work, this sounds cliche, Andrew. I think that a lot of people in corporate America, especially if they're older, have still yet to have boba or bubble tea. So for at work, buy everybody at work or, or get your work realistic, you know, because you don't want to dip into your own savings. Um, get your work to sponsor it. Or invite your just your coworkers out and be like, hey, guys, uh, you know, I don't know if you, if you guys tried bubble tea before. Have you tried boba tea before? Now, for some people, they don't have the geographic availability of all these different cuisines or they don't want to spend the money. And why not just listen to the top songs from every culture across Asia? For example, Andrew, this Viet Trap song from TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, I think listening to music from different Asian ethnicities, even if it's in that language and you don't understand it, I think it's really cool to just vibe out to a different language. And I think that that'll just kind of open you up. Oh, you love some kafab. Oh, man, I love some, uh, yeah, some Thai rap and... Uh yeah, I don't know. Just even Chinese songs, I don't fully understand. You know what I mean? Anyways, point number two, I would say low-hanging fruit, very easy and unique way, is to just purchase some Asian-owned or Asian-inspired products that you've been meaning to purchase. Like, now is the month. I'm not saying spend a lot of money. I get it. The economy's down. But there's a lot of really good Asian owned products out there. Like actually they're good. Like even of our friends, Wind Coffee Supply, Richie Lee Collection. If you want a hard seltzer, you know, Nectar, Lunar, uh, for shoes, I think 1587 does very high quality. For chili oils, Smala Sauce, that's our own. But also there's a lot of other chili oils out there. I'm not gonna, oh, Omiya, there, there's Hot Boy Chili. I think all these are great. And I think that if you've been looking to add something new to your pantry, to your wardrobe, there are actually good Asian-owned brands where the money is going to go back to an Asian. They're thinking about the community, and mm. it's good quality. Yeah, and some of them are Asian-themed, but a lot of them are not, right? Because right. you don't want to necessarily, you know, some people are not into wearing, like, Asian-themed Exactly. Fashion. I'm not telling you you have to wear a dragon with Chinese characters on it on a shirt or something. I'm not saying it has to be that Asian. Point number three, go and learn some phrases from each Asian culture. Or if you find that too difficult or like almost too diverse, which is okay, whatever. Some people don't have the brain capacity for it or the desire. Learn to write something from your own culture because a lot of people, they can speak their parents' language at a level, what, one to six out of 10? Somewhere in between, depends, right? Different siblings, maybe even different levels. But how many people can write their languages culture, uh, write their culture's language? Yeah, and I would just say even learning like different phrases of different Asian languages, it's just kind of cool. I mean, I, I, I think it shows respect. It does, it does. Point number four, watch YouTube videos on the history of every Asian country. Listen, guys, on YouTube, in an infographic animated sense, some are more serious, some are more like light in tone from you can watch the history of every region in asia andrew in five minutes mm. but there are like 35 minute versions too it depends on how deep you want to sink your teeth into right it. this is what i love about youtube is like everything you'd probably read about on the internet like if you went through wikipedia or like even more legit sources to be honest like and you went through history class there's actually good credible history channels that do a pretty good job of summing up the history 
of Vietnam and the Trung sisters and all this, like the history that like maybe you're not always thinking about or the history of China, which is right. very complicated and big. There's history of India, like you're Philippines. you far beyond what a public school or even private school yeah. education would teach. Yes, you. and I don't think everybody out there is super accurate with their information, but usually the larger history channels that have like, you know, some credibility and some views and have had peer reviews through the comments. Yeah, I think they're pretty solid. Number five, go to an API, AAPI comedy show. Let, listen, look at this stat, Andrew. Spending on live comedy shows is at the peak of history right now. Wow. You mean like more people are going to comedy shows than ever before? Yeah, but I'm saying that with that, there's an explosion of like, I guess more ethnic theme comedy too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because comedy is very contextual. It's very cultural. And I would say, you know, uh, there is a lot of comedy shows in any of the big cities. And like, you know, I think that laughing about, about like being Asianology. Asianology is one of them, you know, but uh, by the time this video comes out, you probably won't have time to go to our show on May 14th. But anyways, uh, there's like, I think that Asian comedy shows are really fun to me because that's when Asians get to kind of like, kind of like have these conversations that are a little bit harder to have in person, but you have them in a funny way. And it's just a good way to touch on stuff. Right. Sometimes it, it it's sitting in almost like a Alcoholics Anonymous style is a little too serious to broach some of these topics. It's better to just make jokes about it, laugh at it. Uh, number six, go on a date with a person from an Asian race that you haven't dated before. Whoa. You know David, what? Like this, this sounds like some fetishization. No, 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 no. Because here's the thing. A lot of Asian Americans, not all. They're like only open. Let's say, for example, what? There's like 14 countries in Asia, right? Uh, I, I Forgive me. We'll pop up the right amount here. They might only date like two or three of them or four of them. Why not date all 14? You're just saying that you need to be more open-minded because basically a lot of people out there are closed-minded. First of all, I think you should be open-minded to even... Uh, other races especially if you're an asian dude and you and you get uh, like the pool is small or whatever for dating that we talk about but ultimately be open to other asian ethnicities yeah like just open just just be open and here's the interesting thing if you date all like 14 types of asian girls or whatever let's just say that as a guy you'll see that like some girls like feel like different types of americans so it's almost like if you don't feel for whatever reason you can't date uh a Latina or a black girl, a white girl, you can date Asian girls that feel like those things. Point number seven, take a martial arts class. Guys, martial arts is, I mean, especially like, think about it. Martial arts is a way of fighting. And a lot of the martial arts, most of them are actually from Asia. A lot popular of popular ones. Yeah, and then like whether you're talking about Muay Thai, you're talking about Karate, Taekwondo, you're talking about Kung Fu, you're talking Spe about- Specifically ones with a lot of kicking are from, from yeah, Asia. Yeah, but anything aside from Western boxing and maybe Krav Maga, even though Krav Maga takes influences from other martial arts, essentially a lot of the great martial arts are from Asia. Right. So you think about it. The, the formats, way that the everybody's systems. fighting, even in UFC, essentially- is a mixture of Asian types of fighting. Right. That is because uh, from the Western old fighting, they, it was like, just say, put up your dukes. Well, then, you know, they're also good at creating weapons and guns and stuff like that. So other ways of fighting. But yeah, but I would say even explore single classes. You know, obviously most people are going to do jujitsu, Brazilian jujitsu, Muay Thai. But I mean, you could, you could get into more esoteric ones or you could stick with the mainstream ones. Yeah, take a class. And also, you'd be surprised a lot of these classes, even though it's not taught by an Asian you are learning about Asian culture, like, you know, Zen, breathing, staying calm, Sometimes meditating. the words are still in the, in yeah. the traditional yeah, motherland yeah, yeah. origin language. Uh, and, and last but not least, guys, number eight, follow Asian accounts on Instagram or on social media, man. I remember a time where there was only subtle Asian traits on Facebook, and that was like a little bit kitty or a little bit, a lot of Pokemon Pikachu memes. Now... There are IG accounts, Andrew, for whatever tone you're looking for. Left wing, right wing, centrist, pop culture, light tone, serious tone. Mm. There's everything. Yeah. I think if you're Asian and you follow more than 300 people on Instagram and none of them are an Asian account, like even Next Shark at the baseline, Jackfruit, we're talking about all Man, the there's funny so many 88 tumble you got very asian code oh very asian go subtle asian traits you got 
There's uh, ethnic specific ones f- for the culture. Which right, is your, your little VA, Saigon. Right? There's uh, there's Chinese ones. There's Desi ones. There's Filipino accounts I follow. Oh. One Down Media. Filipinos in the Six is. Funny. Oh yeah, and they're like, like urban. Yeah, dude, just. If you gotta follow one, you gotta follow one to stay tapped in. Like you, you're. I don't, love it. I don't follow, be a self hating Asian. Dude, don't I be follow self-hating. ones from Asians. I, obviously, that of a group that I don't even belong to. Guys, it is May and Asian American Heritage Month. Stop being a self hating Asian at least for the month. Um, I pulled some official ones from other websites. Andrew, like you know, more these are more like from companies. Uh, one of them says support organizations that work to solve issues affecting the AAPI community. Yeah, if you're more politically minded, for sure, this point is for you. you uh, know? Specifically, Andrew, hepatitis B. That is something that uh, primarily affects Asians. I think for me, one thing I try to do is I just try to give f- these free, you know, what I think are like good high IQ takes, and I try to give them out for free to the internet. And that is my way of giving back too. Um, somebody said spotlight an AAPI community leader. And my only caveat to that is I think that there's community leaders that don't always fit into a corporate structure. Mm. Like, you know, people in the community, enclave community, maybe a small business owner that is not like uh, involved in the industry or, or global industries. It's just hyper local. Um, discuss current issues affecting the AAPI community, but across a diversity of, of groups mm. because different communities are going through different issues. And support Asian mental health. F- support physical and mental health organizations for local Asian communities. Probably one of the most overlooked things in the Asian world and address the lack of Asian leadership. Ooh, ooh, that's a good point. Um, ultimately, my whole thing is like, technically you shouldn't need a month, but sometimes that's just how it is in America, right? Because all the media and like companies and like AAPI resource units are more like on the same page during May. Yeah, for sure. Listen, if there's a, uh, some reason that sparks your thought or leads you down. Maybe you follow one of those accounts. Maybe you have an extra conversation because it's the month to do it. That's okay. Yeah. So just stop being a self-hating Asian. That's all I got to say. You know, you, you just do one of these things. Anyway, guys, things. let us know some of the other things that you're going to do to celebrate AAPI History Month. Or maybe you're not going to do anything because you already do it on an everyday basis anyway. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, share this video. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.